out here at the orchard and it's uh, the 19th of, um, of June today. I haven't posted a lot recently because I've been travelling. I was in Dublin last Thursday and in Birmingham on Friday and I've returned to my uh, regular daytime job as well so I'm rather busy. But I just wanted to show um, in, in the interest of the uh, discussions of pest uh, and disease control. Uh, this is um, pear midge, and this is one of the, the vilest pests I know. Um, we did spray insecticide against this, but we didn't spray it early enough, uh, and as a result, well, this is a, 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 a fruit that affected by pear midge, and this is one that thankfully managed to escape uh, its depredations. Um, there's another example. That is what um, a fruit that should look like, and that is what this one does look like. The, the pear midge is a small fly uh, that lays its eggs, um, I'm not sure exactly when, but if, it, well, I think almost immediately after, almost immediately after um, the fruit sets, so really uh, to really stop um, this vile pest um, which lays its eggs, which hatch out and, and uh, form loads of little maggots inside the, the fruit lip, which then dies. Um, I haven't found many live maggots in these, so I think that the, um, the spray we did apply, again, let's just compare and contrast there, uh, which was a little bit after the blossom had fallen, um, may have had some effect on them, but not, not enough. So we're going to get this, is, this by the way, is a, um, well, it's one of our espaliers. This is a, a pear variety called Winter Nellis, one of my favourites. Looking at it, it's not quite as desperately appalling as I thought. Um, we've got perhaps um, two pears for every foot of branch on average, which means that you know, we've got some wholesome pears, so two, about two pears for every foot. Um, so we should, I, I'm hopeful, have something like a crop here, but um, obviously you can see uh, what a vile pest this is. Uh, and again, I, I don't want to offend people who uh, have a, a conscientious objection to using um, um, pesticides, uh, although I will disagree with you if you claim to have a scientific objection to using them. Um, on the grounds that, and, and I am a medical doctor, uh, it is undoubtedly the case that eating um, more uh, fresh fruit regularly has many, many health benefits. Nobody, literally nobody disagrees with that. Through the use of crop protection, as you can see um, from the depredations of the vile pear midge, with crop protection, um, which we did not adequately deploy here, uh, you get more pears like this and not so many like that. Um, through the, the judicious and responsible use of crop protection, um, you do get a better uh, supply of fresh fruit, uh, which is beneficial for health. Um, and um, any, any discussion about the possible harmful effect of fruit, um, of crop protection, pesticide, residues, um, well, most of the, the crop that's tested doesn't have any residue in. And the most effective intervention against some of the, the worst pests, and again, I'm talking about pear midge here, I don't want to spread this too widely. Um, the most effective interventions against these, these pests is, which you can see how destructive they are, you know, I didn't make this up. Um, uh, you know, the evidence of your eyes is, is valid. Uh, you know, this, is, this is caused by not enough pesticide at the right time. Um, and if I hadn't used any, they'd all be like this. Uh, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that through... The, 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 sorry, I've, I've jumbled the words up. I'm not going to redo the video. Um, yeah, the most effective interventions come early on in the season. So it was going to be, you know, about 18 or 20 weeks at least um, on, uh, you know, the rain and the sun and, and, and the wind um, before the fruit is, uh, it comes to fruition. There should not be any residues in it, uh, just lots of healthy um, vitamins and flavour. Anyway, that's the pear um, midge for you. I'll just um, show you what is this one of these trees. I think these blossomed at different times. This is another um, pear, which I think this is Santa Claus, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this looks a lot better, doesn't it? Didn't escape entirely. 
uh, but uh, very much better. I will need to thin these. You know, yeah, we, we did try to kill the pairies, we just didn't hit quite hard enough. Um, this is Burr Hardy, and this is nice. Oh, somebody asked me about um, summer pruning of espaliers. To which answer is yes. <laughs> this is this particular espalier, I don't want to get off onto the subject too much, has made an enormous amount of growth, and most of these new shoots have got to be cut back to within about an inch of where they arise from. But that's another video. Oh, I said that was Burr Hardy, but it's not. Um, this is Burr Hardy. And uh, okay, that's a bit more pear midge there. But this one didn't get it so bad. Um, oh, that's a pretty sight, isn't it? Pretty sight. Uh, that's what it should look like. Um, yeah, we're going to get a nice, uh, nice couple of pears this year. Hey, even the Doyen du Comis, which is um, not our best uh, cropper, has got a decent amount uh, aphid, uh, aphid damage. With, uh, uh, you know, some more aphid causing the leaves to curl up. Um, yeah, this needs a bit of work uh, later. Anyway, there you are. That's our row of uh, Espalia pears. Julia is uh, at the far end. They're just um, uh, thinning the plums. I've said so much about thinning the plums in the past, I won't say any more. Except that if you need to thin your plums and you forget to do it, one day you will go out and you will say some very rude words because um, the weight of the branches, uh, the weight of the fruit will have snapped the branches. And you don't want that to happen, do you? <laughs>